Hi everyone, and welcome to part two of the Frank's TV series called Healing. Um, I'm very nervous about today's episode because I'm actually going to talk about why I left New York City, and I'm going to talk about uh, like the healing, but on a personal note. You know, I'm going to discuss some of the pivotal moments in my life and talk about how I got here, and hopefully in sharing and being vulnerable and talking about my own truth, I can allow space for and inspire other people to do the same. So thank you so much for tuning in to Healing Part 2 and stick around. The purpose of our life isn't yours to understand. Cause she's so free from the man. Cause that girl does what no one can. That's Frank. She's the type of girl that you love to detest. But when the one those feelings you choose to repress, she's so beautiful, I don't know how to address. Let's call her F R A N X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Hello, people of the online universe, and welcome back to a special series on Frank's TV that I'm calling Healing. Um, today's episode is part two, and in part two, I'm nervous. In part two, I want to disclose some of my personal journey of healing in an effort to, um, make space for other people to talk about theirs and to also show the human side to me, you know, like what it means and, and what it's meant. So, okay, so I, last time in, in part one, I know I'm like nervous, in part one I talked about uh, the length of the journey. So I talked about the importance of dedicating yourself to a long journey of healing and how it's going to be a long journey and it takes a long time. And I wanted to talk about some of the steps and like the critical moments that changed my life. So I'm someone who suffered a lot from substance abuse, um, alcohol and weed specifically, and to a certain degree have also had my own issues with um, sex addiction. Um, I wouldn't call it addiction, but sex abuse as well. Whoa. Hi everyone, and welcome to part two of Healing on Frank's TV. In part two, I'm... Maybe let's just jump in, actually. I don't want to introduce it. So, in part one, I was talking a lot about the journey, and I told the world, you guys, that in part two, I would talk about my own journey and shed light onto the, some of the wisdom or the knowledge that I've gained. And I wanted to start, I'm going to go in chronological order of some of the most important moments in my healing process. So when I was in college, I suffered a lot from alcohol abuse and dependency, as well as um, like, being over-sexed out, and a lot of recklessness. And that was in part because I was running from a lot of things. So, the pivotal moment for me was around my 21st birthday, I actually ended up having um, a seizure because I had drank too much and smoked too much weed and wasn't taking care of my body properly. And I ended up, um, you know, passing out and having a seizure. And I'm so grateful to my roommate at the time because without them, I don't know that I would have been okay. Um, 
And that's important to acknowledge because actually across this entire journey of my life, my issues with substance abuse have have always hurt the people who were closest to me at the time. So I'm grateful for the people who picked me up at bars to take me home, the people who dealt with the the negative things I would say and the things I've done and the people who have have seen and interacted with like drunk Frankie I really appreciate the people taking the time to be there for me because I wasn't there for myself so the seizure happened you know slowly I dosed myself back in smoking a little bit drinking a little bit I didn't like recognize my own problems but I was having a lot of anonymous sex and <laughs> I have we all have our issues and I've r- traumatized myself compoundly by not properly dealing with mine so when I was around like 22 23 I had kind of like thought that I had gotten a handle on the alcohol and substance abuse, but I was wrong. But I did stop having anonymous sex. I went five years without having sex or interacting with someone sexually, like a foreign body. Five years. From the time that I was 21 all the way until I, like right before 2020, because I needed to allow myself the space to harness and cultivate and develop my own energy and that was what I saw that was necessary you know because so pivotal moments so far you know the seizure um the choice to become celibate and then I actually got arrested um for DUI when I after I graduated and that was like another pivotal moment for me because it, it legally, it legally forced me to sit down and acknowledge my dependency on substances. And it forced me to acknowledge that I was abusing alcohol and I was putting myself in situations that were very risky for no reason. Um, and then, you know, I go to New York, um, the substance abuse continues to happen. You know, I went through a really a difficult uh, breakup and I felt very defeated. I was lost, you know. I, I was working really amazing jobs and had these like stellar opportunities as far as career goes, but I couldn't properly cultivate or harness them because I was so hurt and I was in such deep, deep pain. So leaving this high level job as a visual director, whatever, and then taking a like less stressful job, maybe with fucking crazier people, um, I was actually able to start going to therapy and I was able to begin to acknowledge that I wasn't loving myself properly. I wasn't taking care of myself properly. I didn't have enough self-esteem or self-respect and the ways that I was built weren't functioning for me in my highest self. I was going crazy. There was no other word for it. I was experiencing a high level of psychosis because I was deep, deep, deep entrenched in my pain and my trauma and I wasn't dealing with it. So therapy helped. Therapy is was the major pivot in my journey. Because it was thanks to therapy that I was able to then restructure and re-boundarize my relationships. And I was able to build space in my own life for me to experience my own healing process. I was able, as a result, you know, I was able to start making music again. I was able to start going out again and meeting people and having fun. And I was able to acknowledge that I was in a really bad spot. 
So what really helped me for healing in those processes was talking to a therapist, you know, talking to someone that was listening. Um, I began to read a lot of spiritual books. I began to cultivate my spirituality a lot more. I began to allow myself the space to actually be who I am instead of being an idea of myself. And I began to forgive a lot of the negative things that I had done, whether that be directly to the people that I've done them to or just to myself, really, more so, is I began to say like, okay, this is who I've been. And this is who I am, you know? I'm not on here to tell you guys who I am. You can gather who I am. But I'm on here to tell you that I've, I had, I, I chose, I chose to be myself. I chose that. I chose to fight bosses that were gaslighting me. I chose to fight friends who were gaslighting me. I chose to fight situations that were gaslighting me because I was able to gather enough strength in the seven years previous of traumatizing myself. I was able to flip it on myself and instead use that power of trauma, trauma to turn into power of self. So, You know, in talking to people and in diving deep and in allowing myself to process the shadow work and acknowledge my own traumas and really begin to see the ways that I actually existed objectively outside my own body, I actually was able to really, you know, do a lot of really strong, powerful healing work for myself. And then I noticed that in that, the universe just conspires for that to happen. So I began to be surrounded by some amazing people who could see the real me. And that was very, very cycle pushing. And the cycle, the slow churning of it sped up to like accelerate towards the completion of it. Um, So COVID happens, you know, we're now eight years in, nine years in to this journey of self. And COVID was the most blessed situation opportunity for me because it was the first time in my entire life as like since I was 14, it was the first time that I've never not worked. And granted, it wasn't by choice, but because I actually, rather than me focus on like, oh, I want to wait for bars to open again. I can't wait for things to happen again. I actually chose to re to pivot and say, no, this is my time. This is the time that I was given to finish this cycle, you know, to really, to really like grab myself and really be me, you know, and become. And I did, but it comes with sacrifice. So I actually, um, left New York City in like late last year because I needed to spend time with my family. I was running for so long. I was running from ideas that I had allowed myself to believe about the people who really cared about me and I didn't want to be taken care of. I didn't want to feel like I couldn't be independent. And that caused a lot of damage to a lot of my friendships because I was not in a place and didn't have enough space to acknowledge that I need my family. Um, So, you know, coming home was literally like the most wise, and influential pivot that I could have made. Because moving home for an extended period of time has allowed me the space to complete that cycle and to really like complete my healing cycle. 10 years later, I finally am able to look at myself in the mirror and say, I love everything about this person. I understand everything about this person. I forgive everything about this person and I continue to move forward with grace. That's not to say that people haven't gotten hurt. That's not to say that I haven't done stuff that I'm 
necessarily proud of. That's not to say that that I'm perfect. Like I said in the last video, it's not I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that I've acknowledged the pain that I was in, and I've acknowledged the things that I was going through, and I chose to move home. And instead of focusing so heavily on survival, I'm allowing myself to be vulnerable for real. Like, and in that process, the ironic thing is, and this is how I, this is how I recognize that I've done real work because my, my art for the first time in my entire life speaks for itself and my humanity speaks for itself. And I no longer require um, alternative forms of speech and communication because I now can see and feel and believe and hear and love freely. It wasn't like I woke up one day and was like healed. It was that the last bits of the truth that I refused to accept while living in New York City, I finally accepted them outside of the city because my family is super supportive and are there for me in a way that I'm honestly very lucky to have. So yeah, you know, living in New York is very hard. Living in New York was a really important step in my process because I needed to develop as a person, but I also, and I needed to know what it was like to survive. But coming home and allowing myself to be vulnerable and saying, I actually need to create and express more than I need to just focus on survival and allowing myself to be vulnerable and depending on my family, becoming sober, um, those things have all been blessings in disguise that I didn't want to accept and I didn't want to acknowledge and I didn't want to allow to come forward uh, living in New York City. I was so focused on the rat race that I had even developed an ego surrounding my spirituality and surrounding who I was. And I was trying so hard to become myself that I became somebody else. But the people who know me, you know the truth. And you've always known. That's the ironic thing, is that I'm sort of the last person to know. But, I mean, that's what healing looks like. That's what it looked like for me, was that even coming home, I've had conversations with some of my, like, greatest friends who I haven't talked to or seen in a long time. And it's humbling because they know me. And they've always known me. Like, the person that, that they're talking to today it's just more clear, it's just more present. I'm more here than I've ever been. So that's like not super detailed, kind of private, Scorpio. I don't really need people to know everything about me, but I do need people to know that it's a process and that I didn't just get here overnight, that I didn't just, wasn't just born to be able to do the things I do. You know, I'm born with like a natural tenacity and courageousness and bravery that is very unique and succinct to who I am but the the allowance of that and the the get the removal of my ego and getting out of the way in order to allow that to prosper and to come to fruition um that was a lot it's a lot it took a lot of processing and it took a lot of shadow work and it took a lot of praying and spirituality and meditation and self-care you know, um, ways that I've changed. I exercise a lot now. I acknowledge every single thing that comes into my body. And I recognize now the different structures that I needed to put in place in my own life to allow myself to become. And I think I'm in the process of becoming. So, I guess I come on here to tell you guys that, um... I'm a free creature, and I don't know what's next. I don't know if I'm gonna come back to New York. I don't know if I wanna go to LA, or Miami, or Sao Paulo, or Madrid. I don't know what's next. You know, I don't have a corporation behind me anymore, and so I don't have the, the, 
I'm not tied. And that was something that was, that's been really liberating for me is that finally within my healing process, I acknowledged the ways that I had been tied traumatically to people and relationships and businesses and different things. And now I can acknowledge that that those traumatic ties that I had allowed to form and I played an e- a huge part in creating um, weren't serving me because it wasn't actual freedom. It was the illusion of freedom. And I had created so many illusions that I wasn't able to see. And now I can see. I'm not saying that I'm healed. I'm saying that I've completed a major cycle in my own healing process. I now am able to be vulnerable in a way that I've never been able to be. I'm now able to create art and talk to family and share information and do things and create community and build. And I'm so blessed to be able to build now because I wasn't allowed or I hadn't allowed myself the space to do that because I wasn't even able to breathe because I was choking myself with the things that I had put myself through. So now I'm here and I'm present, more present than I've ever been, ever in my entire life. I'm grateful for the people that I have. I'm grateful for the relationships that are still standing. And I'm grateful for the relationships that aren't. And I appreciate everything that's come my way because I understand now that everything leads to everything and that nothing is without sacrifice. So while I sacrificed my, while I'm sacrificing my, my ethos of living in New York City and sacrificing maybe the social circles and sacrificing those things, I'm actually able to create more space in my life for bigger opportunities and for the chance to just truly be me. So that's part two of healing. Um, I appreciate everyone sticking around for this and I appreciate all the love and the support and I will see you next week for part three where I'm going to talk about societal oppression and dismantle some of the external aspects of my healing process. Thank you so much for sticking around and I hope that me sharing with y'all is, can inspire you to just begin to share with yourself in the same way that I've learned to. I'll see you next week. Bye.